I'm dreaming of a Christmas. This is recording, you know. We're never gonna get this done. What's up, sweet oh, human? No, let's restart. No, this is perfect. Okay, let's do this again. <laughs> <laughs> this is not how we're starting the video. <laughs> yeah, you are fine. Fine. You are fine. <laughs> Y'all, we love you. And we feel as though whenever somebody will see this is a physical boundaries video, sometimes you like go on to the video and you think that it's going to be a lot of do this and don't do that and black and white and this is the line that you have set and how far can you push it and all of these different things but we actually want to take it a little deeper because that's what Jesus did in Matthew 5 Jesus tells us that he did not come to abolish the law but he actually came to fulfill it because if you look in the Old Testament and you um, will see the Ten Commandments you'll see different commands like do not commit adultery and do not commit murder and taking those laws Jesus fulfilled them by saying I'm actually going to take it a step deeper and let you know that if you hate a brother or sister then you've committed murder and if you look lustfully at a woman then you have indeed committed adultery and so this is something that's so powerful because when me and Josh, when we came into a relationship, mm -hmm. we had already pre-decided individually in our hearts and in our minds mm -hmm. that we were going to honor the Lord. Mm -hmm. And if you look in Ephesians 5.3, we see that there's we're called as believers to have no hint of sexual immorality. And so when we see that, it's like, well, what is a hint? How far mm -hmm. can I go physically? But to to have a heart posture of just wanting to please the Lord, to have a heart posture of belonging to God, it's it's way deeper than what I'm doing outside of my body and what I can do physically. It's a heart deal of what is a hint of sexual immorality? Well, what what is pleasing to the Lord and mm. what is not? And so that's what we're wanting to share with you on this video, that physical boundaries, it actually starts in an individual heart deal mm -hmm. it's an individual mind deal of yeah. am i pleasing the lord mm -hmm. yeah it really it really does start in the mind mm -hmm. um, because it can't just be like oh i'll do that here or i'll do this but you have to know yourself and you have to truly be one-on-one -on -one with god and intentionally knowing his heart and be after his own heart even whenever um, I first asked out Emma to be my girlfriend. The very next statement and the very next questions that we had was, all right, will you be my girlfriend? And then, all right, Emma, I know my heart. I know that if we don't set these boundaries now, that I will hurt you and that there will be scars because I know myself enough and I know that I will need these so that we can be successful for the future, that I can honor you, that I can honor my wife and I can love my wife now and that we'll even be able to love you. Um, and see, Emma, we're just dating. Like, we, mm. we're dating for the intents of marriage, but right now we're just dating. We're not married. And so, if Emma's my wife, great. If she's not, then my wife out there somewhere is with another guy. And she's going on a date with another guy. And so, I want to treat Emma like I want that guy to treat my wife. If I want to, if I want that guy to treat my wife with respect and with love and to honor her and to honor the boundaries that they have set, then I'm going to treat Emma the same way. I'm going to treat Emma with love and respect and I'm going to honor the boundaries and her body and I'm going to honor everything about her because she is someone's wife. Hmm, man, so good. There's something so beautiful about a husband and a wife. In Genesis 2, it says that a man will leave his mother and father and be united with his wife, and they will become one in flesh. Y'all, sex is a beautiful thing. It is fun and it is awesome because God created it. But he created it for the confines of marriage between one man and one woman. And that's why it's so important to set boundaries in this season of not being married because if we see in psalm 23 1 that 
The Lord is my shepherd and I lack no good thing. Mm -hmm. And if we see in Psalm 103 that he fills my life with good things, mm -hmm. then I can know that if he's telling me to wait and not get physically intimate with someone before I'm married, mm -hmm. then it's obviously going to be something worth waiting for because he's not telling me to wait so that I can be kept from experiencing something fun yeah. and experiencing something that's awesome and enjoyable. It's I'm being kept from experiencing hurt and shame and experiencing mm -hmm. something that that will leave me feeling broken. And the Lord wants to protect us from that because He knows that if we wait until we're married, we will be able to experience how fun sex is and experience how beautiful and awesome it is because that's what He wants for us. And that's why He tells us to wait. That's why He sets those boundaries. That's why He warns us in His Word and He commands us in His Word to live a certain way as far as pleasing Him because mm -hmm. He knows that when we live a life that's pleasing to Him, mm -hmm. when we live a life that is honoring to Him and seeking to um, just bring glory to Him, He knows that that's where true fun and true excitement and true enjoyment is found. Mm -hmm. And see, we realize that some of you watching this video may have gone too far, may mm -hmm. have already had sex before marriage, or may have just done something that you regret. Um, but it's so cool that we have a God that his mercies are renewed every morning and that he gives us grace upon grace and that he forgives us for our sins and that he sent his son to die for the sins that we have committed. See, in John 8, it talks about this story of the adulterous woman and how the city is, um, is crowding around this adulterous woman wanting to stone her and kill her for what she has done. And they bring her to Jesus and they're like, what should we do? Uh, should we stone her or should we just forgive her? And so what Jesus does, he draws a line in the sand and he asks, if any of you have not sinned, throw the first stone. And so one by one, so quiet, but one by one, they all started to leave. And once everybody left, Jesus kneeled down to the woman. It's like, where are your accusers? She looked around and no one was there. It's like, exactly, I forgive you for your sins. Now go and sin no more. See, see, Jesus came and forgives us for our sins. And we're supposed to go and sin no more. It's not that we have a justified for our sins. Now we can just sin whenever we want to because we're already forgiven. Yes, you will be forgiven every single time. But also, we're supposed to live for Christ. We're, not, we're supposed to go and sin no more. See, the best time to do the right thing is right now. And so if you are in that tough relationship that's gone too far, or if you're doing things that you know that you shouldn't be doing, turn away from those go and sin no more because you have already been forgiven for the things that you are doing right now and for the things that you're going to do tomorrow and the next day and for whatever you're going to do because you have already for been forgiven but turn from it and chase after Christ and you will find such freedom such grace and such mercy in him because he is a God that wants to give this to you oh man it's so good to know that you're forgiven compels you to want to please the Lord. It's like, I, it's a response. I can't help it. And know that the Lord totally understands what it means to be tempted in the in the physical realm. He, he gets it. We're told in Hebrews 4 that we do not serve a high priest that doesn't empathize with us in our weaknesses, but we serve a God who was tempted in every way, yet he did not sin. So therefore we can boldly approach his throne of grace and receive mercy in our time of need. And we're told in 1 Corinthians 10, 13 that we have not been tempted in any way that is uncommon to mankind, but our God is faithful that he provides a way of escape for when we are tempted. And so know that whenever you're tempted to, to have impure thoughts or whenever you're tempted to be physically intimate, know that that temptation in itself is not sin, but how you respond to the temptation, that determines whether or not it's honoring to the Lord because if I act in that sin then then I'm walking in sin but I have the opportunity because Jesus came and he lived the life that I could not live he defeated sin and death I have the opportunity through him to walk in that victory and say no to the temptation and take that escape route because and I'm able to do it with 
with joy and confidence because I know that not only has God provided the route for me, but He understands what it means to be tempted and He conquered it on our behalf so that we could walk in it. Mm, Yeah, it's so good that we just serve a God that loves us and wants to forgive us of our sins and that we can just live true and bold in Him. Man, we love you.